It's Sway in the Morning. Broadcasting live from Minneapolis on Shade 45. The process is flawed. The process is broken. Those with the money and the power are the ones whose voices are typically heard. We're talking about a process that includes no more than usually 4,000 people who control who makes it to November. In the advent of ranked choice voting, it makes absolutely no sense to continue an antiquated process that not only reinforces the status quo, but continues to perpetuate the isolation of black women who want to seek political office. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to keep applauding right here for this advocate of your community. She's a civil rights attorney. She's a freedom fighter. She's a legal scholar. She's an expert on issues of race, public policy, economic justice. Name one of 40 under 40 by Minneapolis, St. Paul Business Journal, 50 under 50 most influential law professors of color by Lawyers of Color magazine. She got up early today to talk to you, ladies and gentlemen. Give her a standing ovation, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only Nakima Levy Pounds. Levy Pounds. Also joining her, Pretty Brown Eyes. Come on. Who knows that? Come on. One of the most celebrated R&B groups history has ever seen. Made music that's so classic it'll stand the test of time in the year 3000. Went around the world representing the Twin Cities and letting people know that the music and the love is right here. So much so that still got the mic in front of his hand, but he's also got his stumping boots on this pavement right now, marching for the community. Please welcome from mint condition, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Ricky Kitchen. Woo, Heather, man, we sitting next to uh, Twin City Royalty right here. And I love it. Let me ask you something, Nakima. We were just talking off the mic, and it's interesting that, you know, um, it, it's such a divide in politics right now, and, and a lot of times when we're looking at TV and we're hearing about all these issues, that are affecting us in our everyday lives, and we see people speaking on our behalf that you can tell have n no relatability yeah. to what our struggles are or what our needs are. Here comes a person like you uh, who just told me, Sway, I'm, I'm from South Central, and you know, I, I grew up listening to rap music, and, and through rap music, I was able to learn about the disparity between the relationship of the community and, and the police department. And how important is it that you're from the community that you represent? I think it's vitally important in order to represent the true interests of the people of the community, not just using political rhetoric, talking over people's heads, keeping it real about the day-to-day -day struggle that people encounter within these systems. So I think anybody claiming to speak on behalf of the community needs to be walking with the community, needs to live in the community, needs to be authentic in their relationship with the community, and that's what I strive to do. That's what you strive to do. Um, in this particular community, and, and I didn't, I, you know, we, we just met, and I, I really don't, I don't know what, you, what your, you know, what your platform is, you know, I just seen a few videos, and it's like I could tell that she's really engulfed in the community, but in this particular community, we've been coming here for years now, what are some of the issues that need to be addressed, and how do you think you could best go about doing it? Well, we have a number of issues that need to be addressed. I mean, most of us really love the Twin Cities, right? Right. We love the music scene, the hip hop artists, our graphic artists. I mean, the list goes on and on. But the reality is that there are two Minnesotas, one black, one white, both separate and unequal. If you look at the rate of home ownership, income, employment for white people, they're at the top of the charts around the nation. But if you flip the script and you start looking at African Americans and other people of color, what you see is that we're doing worse than black people and other people of color around the country. As a matter of fact, the state of Minnesota has been ranked consistently as one of the worst places in the country for black people to live. You would not know that, but when you start looking at the, the rate of uh, contact between police and African Americans, it's off the charts. As a matter of fact, one of the issues we've been pushing against is the negative treatment 
of African Americans against po the police. That's what brought Ricky and I together. Yeah, it's so interesting that you would say that because um, as I was coming up this morning, I was watching the local news and saw Khalil Thompson. Yeah. Yes. And I just was like, well, my goodness, we could be in the New York area, New Jersey area, you come here thousands of miles away and the same thing is happening yes. no matter where you are. Can you touch a little bit for people that's not familiar with this Khalil Thompson situation yes. in Crystal, Minnesota? Yes, we actually have been talking about this issue since yesterday. So it's a young 18 year old African American man who was in a park, has severe mental health issues and he was carrying an airsoft gun. And the police came upon him at the park thinking that it was a real gun and they opened fire. 18 shots, shot him in the head, shot him in the kidneys. He's had multiple surgeries. His mother doesn't know if he's going to make it. And the sad part about it is that this happened a couple of days ago and the police chief uh, did a press conference where she said, we spotted a young man with a gun, did not tell the truth that it wasn't actually a lethal weapon. And so it took the boy's mother going to Facebook and saying, my son had an air gun and he has severe mental health issues. This shouldn't have happened to him. And then some of our local activists picked that up and then the media started calling us oh, okay. to get the real story. Okay. So this young man is fighting for his life right now and, and his mother is asking for people to pray for him. And she said, I never thought this would happen to my son, but everybody says that when their loved one gets shot and killed by the police. It can happen to anybody, honestly. Well, well, you know, flip side of that, um, I, I have a few friends and family members who actually work for different police departments. And there are a lot of great police officers, you know, and there's some who probably don't know what they're doing, you know, right. um, obviously. I work with folks in Chicago as well um, on, on how to build relations with the police department in the community. What do you suggest? Some of the ideas they've done is they've taken, you know, Chicago has a lot of gang life yeah. and a lot of the leaders have come together in their neighborhoods and offered softball games and having police officers come meet the people that they have to police, shaking hands, having barbecues, you know. Um, what, do you, what, what kind of things can be done in this community to have better understanding, you think, between the department and the community? Well, I think, number one, we need police officers who actually live in our community. So in the city of Minneapolis, 94% of the police do not live in the city. So they're coming from the suburbs, they're coming from rural areas, and coming in and patrolling the community, and it feels like an occupying force. And the overwhelming majority of police are white. And so they're going in patrolling communities of color. They don't have a connection to them. I live in North Minneapolis, which is considered one of our poorest areas. And what we constantly see are police in their squad cars all day long. They don't get out. They don't interact with people unless it's a serious crime or an emergency. You can't build positive police community relations like that. So it's like, listen, if you're getting a paycheck, you can't be scared of the community you're patrolling. Get out your car and get to know the people before a crisis happens. Beyond that, if you look at the situation of the young man, Khalil, he has severe mental health issues. We've had numerous people over the past couple of years who've been shot and killed by police in the Twin Cities because they were having a mental health breakdown. And somebody called the police and that person might have been suicidal. One guy had a screwdriver and a screwdriver against the police's weapons meant that that man wound up dead. And so it's a lot of people that that's happening to. They need um, mental health intervention. Another number that we can call outside of the police if somebody's having mental health issues. And for those of us who have family members with mental health issues, it's something we're concerned about, you know, if they have a breakdown. And so the state needs to put the money towards uh, crisis um, intervention so that that doesn't begin to, you know, continue to happen where people are being killed for no reason. Now, I, I know this is a beautiful place. That's why we come here. We, we come on a Thursday night and we stay till Monday. We, we don't stay in any other area for four or five days. So this is almost a way. That's, that's BJ over there. He, and he's one of our um, um, executives at Sirius XM. And he, he always says... Wait, why do you stay the whole week when you come to the Twin Cities? And it's, he knows I'm using this as an excuse to vacation and hang out with y'all, right? I'll do this work, but you know what it is. Afterwards, what we going to do? Uh, and, but it's such a beautiful place. What is it to look forward to here in the Twin Cities? What's the upside? Well, of course, y'all. Sound set, right? right? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. one reason that everybody's here. Our music scene is so vibrant. You know, I mean, we got a legend right here. 
um, Ricky from Mint Condition. I mean, they've been holding it down for years on behalf of our community. And there's so many up and coming artists here who are just so creative, who need to be propelled to the national scene. So I'm glad you're giving them a chance to cipher later so we can hear you know, what skills they bring it to the table. We'll, we'll see about it. <laughs> right. We'll see what skills they bring. Right. And, well, yeah. you know, Minneapolis is also considered the land of 10,000 lakes. It's really over 11,000 lakes. Yeah. Beautiful scenery yeah. where you can just go and really kick it, you know, with your family. Yeah, atmosphere. They took me fishing last week, uh, last what? year. Yeah, we went fishing. We videoed. Did anybody see that when we yeah. went fishing? You saw that? Yeah, that was cool, right? I caught the most fish. Um, Ricky, let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you this, Ricky. You, you don't have to be here. Mint condition legacy is sealed. You could be at home right now counting your money and trophies. Uh, but but you're here. You know you're marching. Um, and we always ask this, this question because a lot of artists try to skate this. Hey man, I'm not a role model, man. I'm just making money off y'all. I'm not. It ain't my responsibility to tell you how to act right, live right, or not to act wrong and live wrong. I, and, and whatever you do, you want to shoot and kill yourself, man. Hey, whatever, man. I'm just making money. I don't want the responsibility. I just want your money, and I want to be famous. I don't have no compassion, empathy for you. I just want your money and be famous. That's basically what they're saying. That's what they're saying, right? All right, man. Hey, man. You still struggling? I get it, but I'm not. I don't want to say nothing about nothing. You know, one way or the other. You know, I don't want to take a stance on nothing. Why is it important that you do? Man, I, I just got to get out here and make a difference. These women inspired me. Most of the protests you see, it's, it's a majority of, like, you know, women been holding it down for years. Mm. And as a man, I can't sit at home on the couch and watch the women out there getting sprayed by the police, getting, you know, making all these things happen. As a man, and plus, you know, I'm from Chicago. And um, I, I, just, I just couldn't do it, man. I got to get out here and make a difference. I got to, you know, support people. I want to give people advice. You know, I, I want to help the community. I mean, I want to do everything I can to make a difference. I mean, you know, for my kids and for other people's kids. It is, man. Ricky, give out your social media, man. People want to hit you up. You on that? Oh, y'all can find me at, uh, I'm, I'm all, you know, personal. But uh, definitely, you know, look up Mint Condition. Go to MintConditionMusic.com. You can find, uh, you know, the band. And, you know, I'm definitely on there all the time. Definitely. Okay. Okay. And Facebook, right? And Facebook, yeah. Kima, uh, thank you for coming by yes. this morning. And, and how can folks reach you or find out what's going on um, on your camp? You, your camp? You're going to run it for mayor, right? Yes. Okay. November so. 2017. I need y'all to come out and vote like never before. We about to change things. All right. So I'm on Facebook, Nikima Levy Pounds, uh, Twitter, at MV Levy. And also my website is www.minneapolisfornikima.com. So check me out, y'all. All right. Thank you for coming by. Thank y'all for having us. Thank you. Okay, absolutely. Two things. We're going to get this first cypher going. Where the hyenas at? Where the hyenas at? All right, yo. Somebody told me that Nakima was a mean beatboxer. Oh. Is that true? Hold up. Give me one hyena. Give me one hyena. Come here, man. Jump up. Can you, get a, can you make it? I got you. Ready? There you go. I'm just okay. saying, Nakima. What Nikema, you got, though? Man, get this mic, man. Hold up. Hold up. We're going oh, yeah, to see. Go ahead. Stand up, Nakima. What's your name, young man? Brandon Pofus. P-U-L-P-H-U-S. Where you from, Brandon? I'm from Google Park, Minnesota. How y'all doing? What up, man? This is the first time ever done. That's what I'm saying, Sway. When she wins the mayor election, you would you'd be the only person to say you had the mayor beatbox for you in the cypher. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right. So we, off the top, right? Off the top of the head, we could do that. You could do a here. written off the top, whatever you want to do. Get up front and center. I'll vote for somebody you, that beatbox. You with that beat already. <laughs> <All right. Okay. laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yo. Yo, chap lips, I'm getting it cracking. The lyrical cracking, give women the fat. 
I'm wait. You go ahead. You get your beat, and I just go. Go ahead. All right. First, yeah. Chap lips. I'm getting it cracking. The Work. lyrical cracking. Give women the fat dick. Work. It's number your pack. Look at the militant fashions. It's the every wax shit. It's the mother fashion. Yo, with them a time. Unforgivable crime. You rhyme or you were liar. It's like you choosing a die like a festival ain't impressed. Pressing them like the vest at a wedding. It's the reception. Not a dance to with death. I'm the best of dead. Like all your women who cook well. Better with me. You will fail. Beg them up like good wells. Press of the punch, shipping them up. Cage clothes, get high, blow smoke, wings through a nigga halo. Read on me this. I'm sick in this, if it is dick. So why do these feminists tend to diss on my ignorant shit? Kiss me a lick on my tip. Feel on my diddly stick. Giggity, 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 giggity,